Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, April 1st, 2019. Uh, this one will be brief. Um, yet again, my focus remains on the weekly charts. That's why we were up today. We had a decent lift in uh, the markets, um, but I'll go over a couple key levels to watch. We pretty much closed right at, uh, if you recall, the level I've been watching here is the top of these uh, the recent trading ranges and we had that spike from Thursday before last after the FOMC meeting so you can see we closed almost essentially right on that pennies off that level and that's what I'm watching we'll get to the daily chart in a second so you know as I've been saying now this is remember this is the sixth consecutive week we've had one two three four five now six and this is a weekly candle so all that matters is how this how this candle closes so uh, week six of trading uh, on that uh, on or around that level, and again we've been we've been above it before, and we've been below it before since we started testing it back here. Uh, so uh, today is only Monday. The week is very young. We'll see where this goes. Bulls certainly have uh, the potential to build on this and and print a nice big green weekly candle. Um, but again, uh, it's not over to the fat lady sings, and she doesn't come out till 4 p.m. on Friday. Here's the level. I uh, can't recall if I did this in the public video on Friday. I, I did a um, video for members only today that uh, cover, we covered sectors, gold, uh, several commodities, a uh, dozen or half dozen or more trade ideas, and uh, an update in the broad market. And what I'm watching, again, it's that level from the Thursday before last. That was the day after the FOMC announcement right there. Popped up to to uh, 285.18, and we closed uh, essentially on that level. And with 285.74 is looking like the close, but... Uh, uh, again, when you're talking a $285 share price, um, you know, 50, 60 cents is statistically insignificant. It's just basis points, well, well under 1%. All right, so uh, in the bottom of the range again is about 277.53. That excludes, uh, and that includes all the recent reaction lows, and excludes just two candlesticks. On that third candle, we popped back and closed above it. So that's the range right there. And uh, today. You know, if we're playing the game of who won today, well, certainly the Bulls won because they lifted the market by, you know, over 1%. Uh, and they pretty much, uh, you know, failed to to really take that high out with any conviction, that previous reaction high. Uh, the divergences are still intact, so well, this will be continued uh, throughout this week. Okay, one thing that stood out to me all day was the uh, unusually low volume. This is one of the lowest trading volumes of the year. You can see on TC2000 here, this volume buzz that uh, tells you how each stock within the uh, SPY, that these are the top holdings, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, there's your fangs, tracking to their average volume. So uh, well below average, you can see red right across the board. You know, Bank of America was up, you know, only Bank of America in the top, what, 20 five or so holdings top 30 holdings uh, and then almost average volume on JP Morgan so uh, that's something to note when we look at QQQ same story uh, let's pull those related items back up same most of the same top holdings anyways in uh, QQQ but you can see across the board low volume in fact let me look at another monitor here interactive brokers has the 90 day average volume on QQQ has been 37.2 million uh, we did 30 million today. There was a big lift at the close, but we're still below average by a pretty good amount, pretty good clip. And on SPY, the S&P 500, which actually was the, you know, uh, you know, did uh, the only one that uh, even took out or matched that uh, low from two Friday or uh, Thursday before last. Uh, Q -Q or SPY, I'm sorry, 84.6 million shares is the average 90-day volume and it only did 70.3 million so uh, you can see a minute ago I showed you that uh, uh, Q -Q or SPY had uh, came up and pretty much closed right on that previous high where QQQ is still below it so like I said uh, low volume or not just because you have a uh, below average volume doesn't mean a breakout won't stick at all it just means when you have a breakout or a big move and it's on uh, at least average volume but a, ideally above average volume one and a half times or better uh, that greatly increases the chance that a breakout will stick and decreases the chance that it will fail so to be continued uh, and uh, as of now like I said if we're gonna play the game who won today who won tomorrow well Bulls won today and if they can build on these gains if QQQ can take out that recent high there about uh, 183 or so and SPY takes out that uh, 
that uh, previous high with conviction again, you know, solid close, you know, for uh, above that one, uh, 285, 18-ish level, um, then that uh, that would certainly firm up the case and, and increase the odds we can get a green candle uh, on the weekly close this week. Okay, quick look at the 60-minute charts. Here's QQQ. We recently had uh, the, the most recent divergent high was right here. That was back on uh, March 21st. Played out for, uh, you know, a small divergent high played out for small correction. A decent about 3.4% or so. There was a previous one. Looks like about the same correction there. And uh, here, I'll mark those for you. That correction, that correction off that divergent high. Put in this small divergent low right here. That showed better on the uh, 30 and 15 minute charts, but there it was. So we had a little lift. Now, where we're at today, um, we don't have another divergent high because we haven't even met those highs. Again, you have to equal or exceed the highs. But if we do tomorrow, if there's any lift in the morning, followed by a reversal, that's the thing. Divergence is only potential right now. Um, then uh, we would still have uh, another divergent high, just basically an extension of this previous divergence from this point here. That's how your divergence line goes. So that's what a pop and reversal would look like. Um, but uh, again, this will have to be continu continued tomorrow. Otherwise, we just burn through it and then no more divergences. So there it is, potential divergence on QQQ, 60-minute chart. SPY, you did put in a divergent high today, but we don't have it confirmed. You can see the lines down below. Uh, again, we had a divergent high right here at this point, followed by that drop. We had a divergent high here, followed by that drop. And so what we did here is we extended that previous divergence today uh, and it all depends what happens tomorrow. If the market continues much higher, we will have taken out these divergences by moving above that previous reaction high right here. And uh, if we reverse or maybe pop and drop tomorrow, then we have the potential for these divergences to be confirmed by the PPO right here, making a bearish crossover and putting in an equal or a lower high with prices making a higher high. All right. IWM, uh, earlier this morning in the trading room, I pointed out that it was at resistance and um, pretty much closed there. So we have to watch this downtrend line. There's a resistance level. We hit it earlier today. Had a little pullback, closed right there. We don't have anything close to divergence because uh, it's been in a downtrend. And that is our downtrend line. So that's an important level to watch. We had two divergent highs uh, here. We had uh, correction number one there, push back up, put in this small divergent high right there, another correction. And then, as I mentioned, we put in a divergent low here on the 60-minute chart. Uh, so that divergence, the low, the divergent low has played out so far for a lift, but we've run into resistance. Next resistance above pops it as 155.90. But it looks to me if they can take that out with conviction, call it the 156 level, um, then it opens a door um, for a move to new highs. So, I mean, we're still, you know, let me grab it and tell you percentage wise, IWM is still at this point down about 3% off that high right there from. Uh, uh, February but again that's not the all-time high that's just the February high you go back on the daily chart IWM in the small caps are clearly uh, well off the highs right here uh, that's the high from 2018 and as of today uh, despite this 1% uh, rally they're still almost 11% off that high so that's IWM the only other thing we'll look at here is treasuries just because those divergences you know I pointed out we had some really bullish action recently, breakout above 122.50, impulsive buying, the stock market was ignoring that, and now the the Treasury, uh, TLT, the Treasury Bond ETF, is coming back in pretty impulsively, and if we continue down, we will confirm that uh, potential negative divergence I've been highlighting right here. Lower lows in the uh, PPO and RSI. PPO is starting to roll over, hasn't yet uh, made a bearish cross. Now we do have a big old gap right here and usually the top of a gap and the bottom will act as resistance but as I said based on this breakout we could easily come in and back test this breakout here um, uh, that would that would just be you know normal typical TA move a breakout come in to back test it and if we successfully hold it come on up and that's what I think uh, will happen whether we get the back test or not if the divergence is confirmed mm, I'll have to really look at this chart 
uh, and, and try to uh, you know figure out if that uh, if that back test will fail. It is it was solid resistance, so I expect it to be solid support. So let's just say at this point in time, I do favor that level holding, even if uh, even if we come back test and it holds for a while as support from above. Uh, if something else happens, if we smash on through there, then there's something else going on. But again, on the weekly chart on TLT. Uh, I still think this is pretty bullish, this yellow bullish falling wedge, breakout, back test, and move up. Now where does this all go? Again, I usually don't cover treasury bonds in my you know, broad general market analysis of public content, but this speaks to what the stock market will most likely do if this continues to play out, whether we back test or not. If we continue to rally up here to my target about 128.56 or so, or back test of this trend line, they come in close together, uh, that will most likely be due to uh, weakness in equities. However, if this breakout fails, then uh, the breakout in the market, well, not breakout yet, but potential breakout we might have in the stock market this week. If it goes much higher today, especially SPY, but QQQ needs to join the ride. Uh, if that happens, then uh, Treasury bonds will probably give up that 122.50. Uh, here I have it as 122.60, but it was 122.50 on the daily. You can zoom in a little bit. And again, that's, that's a pretty big level. You can just follow this line. Look at all these reactions from below, reactions from below, uh, or yeah, reactions from above at that point, reactions from below. So a very technically significant level. And uh, again, bullish for Treasury bonds that it broke out. That means rates are going down and bonds are going up. And uh, I really, really doubt it is possible, but treasuries and the stock market usually trade inversely to one another. So if this scenario plays out, this bullish scenario for TLT, that will most likely coincide with a bearish scenario in equities uh, and vice versa. You know, we lose that 122.60 level, 122.50 and come on down for, let's say, another back test or another drop down here. That will coincide again, most likely with that bullish scenario that SPY finally puts the 282 level clearly in the rearview mirror, prints a you know nice big green candle well above it, and builds on that the following week. Um, that would that would probably bring Treasuries down like this. All right, so that's it. Uh, let's just watch those levels. Let's watch what happens tomorrow. Remember today again was. Uh, low volume. We didn't really break out or do anything. We just ran back up to the top of that range, the recent trading range, by coming into that uh, those highs from last Thursday, or Thursday before last, I should say, Thursday before last on SPY, and uh, that's it. This was, you know, below average volume. So either it's going to be uh, proved to be an April Fool's rally or not. And uh, if it's not, we build on it. And the longer the bulls can keep it above here, and the and the farther they can drive it above that level, then uh, the, the better the odds are that we'll get a breakout and then go on run out and, and try to take out the uh, previous all-time highs there, which aren't too far away now in SPY, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens. All right, we'll stay tuned and uh, I'll do a follow-up tomorrow if there's anything significant that happens. If it's more of the same like we've seen, I may skip the daily updates. You know, I'll always put something out there. Uh, on the site for members, you know, mix it in with sector analysis, commodity analysis, gold analysis, Bitcoin, all that stuff we've been watching lately. Uh, but uh, as far as the broad markets, that's that's what I need to see is get out of this trading range, get away from this 282-ish uh, level, really. <clears throat> At this point now, 286 needs to be taken out to the upside or 277 on the downside. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.